It happens all the time. A celebrity journalist comes to town and everyone does what they can to impress. They whine and dine and put on a good show, but you know what happens. A few weeks later, the story comes out and the town gets trashed. It happened in Atlanta during the 1996 Olympics and it happened in Augusta in 1953. And the journalist was Dorothy Kilgallen. She's pretty much forgotten today. But half a century ago, Kill Gallon was part Barbara Walters and part Oprah Winfrey with a dash of Sylvia Cooper thrown in. A nationally known newspaper reporter, author, and screenwriter, Kill Gallon was a Hollywood columnist, a radio personality, and a regular panelist on the TV show What's My Line, where her perceptive interviewing skills were on display each week as she tried to guess the profession of a mystery guest. She came to Augusta 61 years ago this spring because everyone else was coming to Augusta too. We were a boom town with construction at Fort Gordon and the bomb plant bringing in people and jobs. Kilgallen was assigned to write an article on such boom towns for Good Housekeeping magazine. Chronicle editor Lewis Harris did what he could to keep Kilgallen happy. He took her to a bar. Specifically, he took her to the Bon Air Hotel. And then he took her to the Colonial Club for socializing. And then they went to the Town Tavern for lobster. And Kilgallen said it was pretty good. It cost $3.50. Kilgallen saw all the commerce and construction and said of our town, it is as if Scarlett O'Hara had come to town from the ball, wiggled out of her satin gown and put on a space suit but Kilgallen was at heart a reporter, and she quickly found another side of Augusta that most boom towns seemed to share, gambling, a lot of it. When her article came out in April 1953, Kilgallen described visit after visit to Augusta's many gambling establishments. This was sort of embarrassing because Mayor Hugh Hamilton had run for office the year before on a vow to get rid of it. After the article came out, Mayor Hamilton demanded an apology. The Richmond County Grand Jury vowed to get to the bottom of it too, dutifully announcing that it would do so on the Chronicle's front page. Well, you know what happened. Not much. The Grand Jury never seemed to get into investigating gambling and Kilgallen herself had to rush off to England to cover the crowning of the new queen, Elizabeth II. Dorothy Kilgallen continued to maintain a high media profile and was known for having excellent sources within the Washington spy community, frequently offering scoops on Castro and the CIA. But it was the last years of her life that grew very, very interesting. A Hollywood insider, she knew President Kennedy and his girlfriends and hinted at liaisons with movie star Marilyn Monroe. After Kennedy's death in Dallas, Kilgallen went to Texas to cover the case. Jack Ruby, the bar owner who shot Lee Harvey Oswald on national TV, gave her private interviews. She told her friends that she was writing a book that would tell the story of who really killed Kennedy. That book was never written. In 1965, soon after returning from Dallas, Kilgallen was found dead in her home. She was sitting up in bed, reading a bestseller that her friends said she'd already read. She didn't have her reading glasses, without which she couldn't have read the book anyway. And her notes for all the interviews on Kennedy, they were never found. Initially, the story was she died of a heart attack. However, further tests indicated a curious alcohol drug overdose, some said similar to Marilyn Monroe's. Lewis Harris, by then the executive editor of the Chronicle, wrote a nice column about Dorothy Kilgallen for the paper. It was the same paper that only months before had published one of its most talked about investigations ever, a look at organized gambling in Augusta. <laughs> 